Now that all the technical stuff is out of the way, we can talk about how to make an image subjectively beautiful. One way to create an image is just to randomly place some objects like a piece of text, a 3D model and a sunlight coming from above and just lighten the scene and rendering it like this. Well, I hope you all agree that this is not a pleasing looking image, but with some basic composition rules and some basic lighting and coloring theory, you can create a very nice looking image out of this. And that is the next image. And here you immediately have a way more pleasing image with some basic rules. For example, the monkey itself, it has more detail around the head. It's separated from the background because of the fill light. You can see what's happening in the shadows. You have three different lights. The key light, which lights up the face and shows some detail in the face. And you have the fill light, which shows detail in the uh, in the shadows. Uh, the one is more reddish, the one is more bluish, which is contrasting colors. And then you have a pleasing looking rim light separating the object from the background. Also, there are some guiding lines within the scene. For example, when you start out at the word composition, you have a line underneath the word that is pointing eventually to Suzanne. And then from Suzanne, you can also start and Suzanne is looking at the word and it's also balanced. Suzanne is at the bottom right, the composition in the top left. And because of the, the gradient in the background, you also have some contrasting balance. But before we try to make such an image, we need to understand why, which is not always black and white. As you can see here, composition, there are multiple sources that have different opinions on what composition exactly is. Wikipedia says composition is placement and arrangement of visual elements or ingredients in your work of art as distinct from the subject. It can also be thought of as an organization of the elements of art according to principles of art or the Academy of Photography combining focal elements based on a rule and the rule needs to be easily identifiable or uh, Andrew Price, the Blender Guru, arranging elements in a scene in a pleasing and easy to read manner, which I love because it's short and effective, and myself using familiar common patterns and guidelines to highlight your subject while still making the image comfortable to look at. So yeah, is it subjective or is it following rules or is it a little bit of both? I would say it's a little bit of both. Take what you can get from these rules and make a nice image, which is nice for yourself. But to make a nice composition, you do have some components within the image. You have the focal element, something where your eye is drawn or led, led to. Uh, you have the structure, the organization of these focal elements based on a rule. And you have the balance to ensure the weight of the image is evenly distributed on the image itself. And to understand all of the components, we're going to go into them individually one by one. So first off, the focal elements. There are multiple focal elements you can use. You can use contrast, you can use saturation, you can use the depth of field, you can use figures and faces. We are naturally drawn towards uh, figures and faces. But yeah, these figures and faces are not very applicable to scientific visualization, unless you have, for example, a MRI scan of a face. But you also have to watch out with these focal elements. Don't pe place too many focal elements in one to one image because then it can to get too clouded and then you don't know where to focus on as a viewer. Besides the focal elements, you also have uh, focal guidance, which is guiding the eye towards the focal elements. Uh, in this case, you have guiding lines, for example, perspective lines or uh, framing. Framing is, for example, when you place a building in the middle or on a third or placing objects so that another object is framed between these objects. Uh, geometry and shapes, which is also a way of guiding your eye towards certain direction. Uh, a good example for both focal, uh, focal elements and vocal guidance is the image to the right from Gleb Alexandrov. 
uh, you can see already when you kind of squint your eyes you already see a light oval shape of all the neon signs and all the lit up signs that are around the central object which is this little person over there which is already a figure a focal element itself and also the perspective all points toward the same person so this is these are the guiding lines we were talking about and this way you have like a nice balanced image where you immediately look around and find eventually this figure in the middle this is a very good composition and the next component within composition is structure this is where the focal elements are placed and how the guiding lines are uh, are guiding towards the vocal points and basically how the image is structured in general there are multiple uh, structures the most famous three are the golden ratio and why the golden ratio because it's familiar because it uh, it comes along in nature a lot and you have the golden ratio in your face and on the body in nature itself and that's why it feels comfortable and comfortable equals beauty and that's why people think the golden ratio is one of the better compositional structures and as you can see here in this uh, this server image a wave is a very good representation of a golden ratio here the, the the server's head is exactly on the well almost exactly on the on the on the converging point of the golden ratio and the wave follows this golden ratio itself so it guides you towards the server and then you have a second structure the rule of thirds which is basically just a simplified version of the golden ratio uh, so it's easier to use but it still has the comfortableness and the familiarity of this golden ratio and but it's easier to apply an example is this image made by me uh, the main focal element this golden blob is placed on one third of the image and finally you have the uh, center structure which usually is combined with symmetry which also creates balance in your image for example this this image of the Taj Mahal uh, it is perfectly balanced and it has a nice symmetry and it, it is then it also feels comfortable but this is a very difficult structure to apply especially in photography but in visualization of your data itself there there is not always perfect symmetry so this one is difficult to apply and difficult to find in your image and then we have the last composition component we're going to cover and that is balance balance is the way you distribute your focal elements in your image so that the visual weight is balanced so overall in the image it feels that the image doesn't have more focus on the left side than on the right side for example for example the two images below the first image is unbalanced because there's nothing going on the left side and all the stuff that's going on is on the right side so it feels feels off and the second image is balanced just by adding another component to the left side and this way it's balanced and it looks more pleasing a good way to see if your image is balanced when it's a very busy scene is just to squint your eyes and that way you just see like blobs and shapes and then you don't focus on the detail itself but you just have these blobs and shapes and you can see if those blobs and shapes are balanced within your image another thing to look out for when you try to balance your image is to look out for duality if you have multiple focal elements and, they, and you try to balance your scene but one focal point is more important than the other you don't want the focal attention to be the same for both elements you want one to be more important so maybe place that one more in the foreground and maybe blur the other one a little bit in the background then it's still balanced but uh, you focus more on the more important focal element so try to avoid duality and next we have colors you can use colors for composition as well why would you ask well you can guide your spectator towards a certain subject use it as a focal element or as a guiding line uh, you can give your image a certain mood which sometimes you don't want to use within visualization because you don't want to be suggestive 
you want to be as neutral as possible when it comes to visualization but sometimes when you want you want to dramatize your image you can create a certain mood to your visualization with colors as well and here is an example of color as a vocal element you have a completely red background with a gray umbrella which immediately your eye will guide yourself towards the gray spinning umbrella and that way you can immediately go to the vocal element another example of a color as a vocal element is this visualization of a network of network researchers created by me each sphere within this uh, visualization is a single researcher and the size and the color of this sphere represents the connectiveness within the network the redder and bigger the sphere is, the more connected with other researchers this researcher is. And this way, immediately you are guided towards the big blobs and also the depth of field was used as a vocal element. But you immediately also are drawn to the right, where you have this red blob, which is an area where researchers were all working together, but not with others. Before we go into the guidelines of using color within your renders, we do need to understand what a color wheel is and how it's used in Blender. On the left you see a 3D representation of such color wheel. It's represented as a cylinder where the U is all the possible colors that can be created with the color wheel. The saturation is the intensity or purity of the color and the value is the brightness or darkness of the color. And the way it is represented in Blender is with this color picker. Uh, here you also see this color wheel, red, green, blue, red, green, blue, and with the value slider here, but also with individual numeric entries. One way to have a correct use of colors within your render is to use color harmonies. It's, uh, these are convenient color usage guidelines within your compositions. You don't strictly have to use these, but these are generally pleasing to look at. The first one is the complementary color harmony. This color harmony is the most used and is chosen a lot because it gives a pleasing contrast in your image. It ch chooses two colors, both of the opposite side of the spectrum. For example, in this case, warm and cold. It's a na natural thing that goes on in nature. And that's why it's a pleasing, uh, pleasing color harmony. And it's used a lot in, in movies as well. For example, especially this uh, orange and teal color harmony. But you have to watch out that you don't use it 50-50. For example, using the red saturation 50% and the green saturation 50%, you always have to have a, a off balance of these two. So use one at a saturation of 60 and the other at 30, for example. And then you have the analogous, which is um, colors adjacent to each other on the color wheel and this is a combination of colors you usually see in nature for example if you have a spring scene you have these green light green and yellow or if you have a an autumn scene you have more of the orange yellow and reds and if you have a night scene you have more blues combined together so yeah this is easily recognizable and it's easy on the eyes it gives a comfortable mood and then we have the triadic, which are colors that are equally distant on the wheel. Uh, this one is very hard to pull off and usually only works in like cartoonish situations. So if you could choose the other ones, I would choose the other ones. And then you have the split complementary, which is basically the same as the complementary, but you have one key color and two opposite colors, where the key color is your main focal color. And now for some examples of color harmonies. As I said, the overly famous orange and teal split complementary. This is, uh, yeah, Hollywood is completely saturated with this uh, color harmony. Uh, every single movie poster looks like it has orange and teal. And there is a reason for it because it just works. It's just warm and cold colors. It has a nice contrast and it's familiar. So if you want the easy way out, just use uh, orange and teal. And another great example is this image. Uh, this is a square or double complementary, 
uh, he have um, red and green which is one complementary but you also have yellow and blue bluish this way you have a, a complementary in the foreground and a complementary in the background and it just overall gives a very nice and well balanced image I really like this image when it comes to color harmonies and then finally we have some final color tips there are of course some tools that help you with these color harmonies or with the use of colors within your visualizations or in your renders you have some very useful online tools for color harmonies for example this one from uh, adobe the color wheel creator here you can just select which kind of uh, color harmony you need or which one you want for example the complementary and then you can select a color and you immediately see which other color is the opposite side of it or for example the split complement complementary or the analogous one and as you can see it's pretty useful to, for a for a guidance tool for picking your colors or another one is this one from uh, colorschemedesigner.com if we go towards it, you can see it's uh, the same as the one from Adobe. You can pick a color and you immediately see what the complementary color is. So another final tip would be to pick a color that fits the mood for your visualization and then go further from there and then from there pick which color and which color harmony you want to use. And also don't uh, oversaturate. Uh, this this makes the image way too straining for the eyes. I mean, it could be an artistic choice to oversaturate, but most of the time it doesn't work. Most of the time it will just make it the image way too busy for for your head to process. And finally, uh, with the color harmonies, never go 50-50 or 25 25 25 with the saturation for example with the complementary you don't go 50 50 or with the square color harmony you don't go 25 25 25 you always take different uh, color saturations so now we come at the last slide the final takeaway when it comes to composition within blender and composition in general uh, use everything I just said and use everything within this slide as a set of guidelines instead of a rule book. Not every rule should be followed. Some can be broken and it can even lift your uh, render to the next level and make it stand out. That is usually how art is made, breaking those rules. That is my last takeaway for these slides and uh, I wish you a happy day.